We're going to go over reverb effects in this tutorial. We're going to work with these two files here to track them down. Go to working files, music, just couldn't be that way, subfolder, and then track down the vocal excerpt and the surround mix files. The reverb effects are here under effects, reverb. There are those five effects. We're going to work with them in something other than alphabetical order. So what are reverb effects? Well, reverbs is short for reverberations. You know, any room has kind of a feel to it, an acoustic characteristic. If you're inside a production studio, that acoustic characteristic is dry. You don't hear any reflections at all, no reverb, no echoes. If you're inside a cathedral, let's say clap your hands together, you'll hear that sound echoing around the room and sort of decaying away. And it might take several seconds to decay away. And that's a different kind of acoustic feel. There are lots of reverb inside a big building like that. So we have five effects that attempt to simulate locations. And then you can adjust the characteristics, you know, how big the spaces are, how much reverb is going on relative to the original sound and things like that. I'm going to open up all five of them here so you get a chance to see what they look like and how they kind of relate to each other. Drag that over a little bit so you have some more room. There we are. So you have five reverb effects. Studio reverb, convolution, regular reverb, full reverb, and then surround reverb over here. Why do I think it's a little confusing? Well, let's just take a look here. We've got output level here. But do we have output level here? No. We have mix. Output level is dry and wet. Mix is dry and wet, really. That's what it means. Over here, do we have output level? Well, no, we have wet, dry, mix, which is similar. But on the full reverb, we have just output level dry, no wet involved. So they could probably, you know, have that be consistent from one effect to the next. Here we've got diffusion. Now, what's diffusion? Diffusion simulates absorption in a space. If there's a relatively short diffusion time, then it simulates a room full of people and furniture and stuff like that. If it's a long diffusion time, then it simulates an empty room where there's nothing to bounce off besides just the walls. Well, it's a time-based thing, but here it's a percent. Whereas over here, it's time. So that's kind of confusing. Why percent in one place and time in the other? You've got damping, high frequency, damping, low frequency, and then you've got high frequency cut, low frequency cut, and then damping. It'd be best if these guys were a little more consistent from one to the next. So what I suggest you do, depending on which effect you're working with, hop over to the help file and see what these things mean in each circumstance. I can't really explain all of them as we go forward. I will show you the basic process you go through when you work with these effects. So let's close these guys down. And we'll just take a look first only at the studio reverb effect. And I think that's the easiest one to work with because it's the only effect here that doesn't have what's called a convolution reverb impulse file. I've kept the convolution reverb effect open for a moment because over here it says impulse, whereas over here you won't see impulse. If you look at the reverb and full reverb effects, you won't see a convolution impulse option either, but they are convolution impulse files that have an impulse built in. So this one doesn't. What is an impulse file? Let me just give you a sense of what that's like. Impulse files are recordings made in a physical location. It could be something like a classroom or an auditorium or a cathedral, but it's some place where you make a sudden sound and record that sound and also the decay that happens after that sound. If you haven't heard an impulse file, I think it's kind of cool. So let me go track that down for you. To find the impulse files, go to wherever you stored Adobe Audition on your hard drive. Go to the plugin subfolder and then the VST3 subfolder. All effects in Audition are VST3 compatible. And inside that folder are two other subfolders, impulses and sound impulses. Impulses are the impulse files for the convolution reverb effect, and surround impulses are used in the surround reverb effect, but they can be used interchangeably. They're just loaded up in different folders. Let's go to the surround impulses one, because these ones are a little more dramatic than the ones in the regular convolution reverb effect folder. Double click that. And here are the impulse files. They are simply WAV files. They can be WAV or AIFF files, your pick. You can make these guys. You just go to some place, recorder, and make a sudden abrupt sound. Now I'll show you what I mean. Let's just uh, listen to this cathedral impulse file. Interesting. It's almost like someone shot off a gun inside a cathedral. Let's hope not, right? Move on to the deep well. This one I love. This is the coolest one of all the impulse files. Wow, it takes forever to, to decay in some deep, dark well. And why you don't hear these things, you don't hear that noise, but that sound is what is used as the basis to create a space when you work inside the convolution effects. And all the audition effects are convolution-based, 
except for Studio Reverb. So let's just start with this guy. This guy just creates reverb electronically only without any help from an impulse file. Let's just start with the default and just see what it sounds like. Need to turn it on first. Here we go. Give you what you wanted. I couldn't give what you were so it's a mild reverb, and that's because the default setting has a low wet value and a high dry value. Simply changing the dry and wet will make a difference here. Asking for Something simple as I that. Couldn't give you what you wanted. We're changing the preset. Let's try a large vocal reverb. When you do that, the room size suddenly gets to 100. It doesn't say exactly how big the room is. It just says 100, meaning the largest size you can have here. Other effects actually have specific dimensions down to the cubic feet and how wide and how long it is. Pretty amazing, actually. But here it just says it's really, really big. I gave you all I could and then some more. All right, so that's the basic process. You can check out what these other guys mean by just checking out the help file. Let's move on to the convolution reverb. Open that up, turn it on, kind of center it up here. Now, the way this works is you select a preset. And when you select the preset, it automatically selects the associated impulse file. It is kind of odd that you have two different drop-down lists here, but if you do select the preset, like let's say under the bridge, let's listen to that for a second. Couldn't give you what you want. And then that opens up the gallery impulse that's on the hard drive inside that subfolder that I showed you along with the surround subfolder. And you can say, okay, now I've got under the bridge, and that sets certain characteristics here and selects the impulse file. But you can start changing these characteristics, and that'll change the way it sounds. So I'll increase the gain, for example. And I'll, let's say, change the damping frequencies to make them not damp so much. So it does sound different. Or, with these guys already set, you can change the impulse file, and those guys will stay the same. It'll just be a different impulse file. Let's say, Massive Cavern, and those guys won't change, but it'll be a new location. The way it works basically, pick a preset here, it'll pick the impulse file, but then you can change these settings and or change the impulse file to something else until you find something that you like. Close that guy down. Open up the reverb effect. Reverb is a convolution based effect. It is a subset of the full reverb effect. And notice that it's red. This guy is a high processor intensive effect. So if your processor is not up to speed, you might want to apply it so you can actually hear how it really sounds, but I think we'll be okay. Let's just, again, start with the default setting for reverb. Couldn't give you what you wanted. Pretty straightforward, but notice these guys get grayed out as you play it. You can't change these guys on the fly except for the dry, wet mix. Let's just change that then. Couldn't give you what you wanted. I couldn't give... I noticed, though, when I made the change, nothing happened, but I had to stop and start for you to hear it. So again, this is a pretty processor-intensive effect. Sometimes the stuff on the fly here, while you can change it, it doesn't really kick in for another couple of seconds or so. All right, let's just change to a preset. We'll say, notice the presets are not as massive, not as many as the other ones. They're pretty straightforward. We'll take a pumping reverb, and we'll go down here and start again. Couldn't give you what you wanted. Kind of repeats a lot in distinct sounds. But at any rate, that's reverb. Let's move on to its granddaddy, full reverb. It's a much, much bigger deal. It has what are similar characteristics. If I open reverb back up again, you'll see that if you look at this, you've got decay, pre-delay, diffusion. Those are all the same. Then you've got dry versus wet, which is essentially this thing over here. And then you've got a room size where you can make some very specific selections here in terms of the cubic meters. And then the dimension says the relative width versus the depth. You can't change the height. The height is always going to be the same amount depending on the setting you select here. If I change, let's say, to a different setting, let's go to an empty living room, then it'll be a lower height. But you can change the relative dimensions of the width and the length like that. See those guys changing down below as well as the ratio here. A good ratio is somewhere between a zero and four. So when you get over here, you're getting way, way too wide versus the depth. And it doesn't sound quite as you'd expect to hear, let's say, a typical cathedral is longer than it is wide. Anyway, they have all these options, but they're different than the reverb itself, which is sort of the subset of this guy. And then tucked away is another tab. And then you can control what's called the coloration, which again, affects the way the sound works, the way the reverb works. So I'll leave it to you to check these guys out. I can't change them on the fly. I'll just leave it to you to mess with those guys. Let me just close this other one down. 
and we'll try a preset. We'll go to open concert hall. Let's see what that sounds like. Couldn't give you what you wanted. There we go. We'll change to another preset. Church. There we go. Couldn't give you what you wanted. And again, once you do that, you can change the room size, make it really big if you want to. And notice that it's 0.38. That's what a typical church would be. It would be really long and not that wide, so that's normal. But we'll spread it out a bit and see what difference that makes. There you go. Couldn't give you what you wanted. You hear that little click there as going along? That's because it's processing pretty hard here, and occasionally you'll hear clicks when you preview it like this. So those are the main effects. Let me switch over to this surround mix I've got. I've applied the surround reverb to this. Now this is the surround mix I made. Let me turn off the surround mix first. I couldn't give what you were asking for. Where I've moved the instruments around the room a bit, put the bass inside the low frequency effect subwoofer area. And now I'm going to apply the surround reverb to it. And we'll just play it for a second. So you have lots of controls over this. How much do you want the center to be wet versus dry? The left and right balance, you could change this to kind of make it bounce back and forth a bit. And the front and back balance as well. And then the wet dry mix, right now it's only wet. Let's reduce it a bit and see what it sounds like. I gave you all I could and then some more. So you can also change the low frequency effect here if you don't want too much reverb on the bass and then you can also change the center as well. That's the surround reverb which is essentially the same as the convolution reverb in that you pick a preset here like trapped in the well. Guess which one that's going to be. It's going to be that deep well impulse file. And then you notice that you select that and then it selects an impulse file with some settings in advance. Then you can decide how you're going to change those settings to uh, suit your purposes. So that, folks, are the five reverb effects. Yeah, I understand that it can be a little confusing going from one to the next. So my suggestion is you start with the reverb effect, which is the subset of the full reverb. Kind of get a sense for how those guys work, diffusion, perception, pre-delay time, things like that. And then graduate the full reverb if you want to really step up your game to all the possibilities inside the reverb effects here in Audition.